So when we start looking at all the different sub markets in the Phoenix metro area, Chandler has consistently been the hottest and the most competitive market for quite some time. And this has a lot to do with people moving here for jobs. You know, Intel's a big one here. Um, but just because it's the hottest market doesn't necessarily mean that if you're buying a home that you're going to really struggle to find a house. And also, if you're selling your home, it doesn't necessarily mean you're just going to be able to list your house and get multiple offers right away. And get top dollar for your house. A lot of homeowners are, you know, I believe a little bit jaded coming out from the, you know, 21, 22 market where things were super, super hot. And even though it's still hot, it's not 22. We're in a very different market today. So let's dive into actually what we're seeing today in the market and some considerations and strategies, whether you're buying or selling your home in Chandler. And by the way, if you guys are enjoying any of my nerd talk, if you could do me a solid and give me a follow, that would be fantastic. Now, the median sales price across Phoenix Metro as a whole is $450,000, where in Chandler, it's been in the low 500. So it's definitely higher than a lot of other markets in the Phoenix area. However, something that's really important to note is that Chandler itself has a lot of sub markets within the city itself. I mean, it's a pretty big city. So one good example, if we look at the 85224 zip code in Chandler, that's the north part of Chandler, just east of the 101 and north of the 202. So the median sales price there was actually um, $472,000. However, if you go further south, the very south part of Chandler, you know, around like the 85248, 85249 zip code, the median sales price there was $613,000. So, you know, almost $150,000 more. And something to keep in mind, you know, the south part of Chandler definitely has very much a different vibe. You know, you're going to have bigger homes, newer homes, maybe more upgraded features there too. Some of the communities have like insane amenities too, but that does come with a price tag. Now, as I mentioned before, it's definitely not like what we saw in 22 as far as competition in the market, but we're still seeing a considerable amount of homes actually going above asking price, particularly closer to that median sales price point, like between 400 and $600,000. We're actually seeing almost one in five homes, um, about 18% of homes are actually going above what they're listing on the MLS. Now, when we look at the more specific markets or sub markets in Chandler, and we're really pinpointing on where a lot of the homes are actually going above list price, it brings us back to that 85224 zip code, that area in the north part of Chandler along the 101. Um, and this isn't necessarily surprising to me at all, because first off, it's one of the more affordable areas of Chandler. Um, and also, even compared to some of its counterparts like Gilbert or Tempe on the other side, there are definitely some more you know, slightly older homes, more affordable options for people. So a lot of first time home buyers are coming to this area as well. And then the other thing too, it's right on the 101. It's pretty, um, it's farther north. So it's going to be more central than other parts of Chandler, more accessible to like Phoenix Sky Harbor airport. So again, doesn't really surprise me. However, when we were looking at about how much these homes are actually going above list price, they're only going about six to $7,000 above the asking price. Now, if you're a home buyer, I wouldn't be too concerned. And if you're selling your home, I want to get too excited yet. And the reason for it, so when we look at Chandler at a whole, about 42% of homes are actually providing seller concessions to the buyer as part of their offer. On average, it was about $8,000 that they were actually giving to the buyer. And these seller concessions, what they're primarily used for are one of two things. The first thing is a lot of people are using these seller concessions for is to actually put it towards closing costs. So the buyer doesn't actually have to bring as much cash to the closing table. But what I'm seeing actually most of my clients do and you know other people that I've talked to is they're actually using those seller concessions and they're giving it to the lender for a rate buy down. So that way they can lower their mortgage rate and then their monthly payment is much more feasible and not near as scary as it would be if, is if they had the regular mortgage rate. So for a lot of those homes that are going above list price, most of them are probably providing some sort of seller concession to the buyer 
So as a seller, your net sheet, when you're looking at how much you're actually taking away with you, it's not like you're really getting above list price for a lot of those homes. It's just that we're shuffling things around to make the opportunity as advantageous for the buyer as possible. However, I would say if you're selling your home in Chandler, one of the best parts right now is the agent days on market. So this is how long your house is actually on the market before it goes under contract. And right now, the average agent days on market is 11 days. Now, this doesn't mean you're just going to be able to put your house on Zillow and sell it right away. Um, you still have to do, you know, the important things like making sure your house is clean, making sure it's priced appropriately and not much higher than a lot of the comps or uh, recent sales in your neighborhood. And obviously, if your house is moving ready and it's in a good location and it's been updated, it's going to go quicker. And if you are planning on buying a home, particularly in more of that median sales price point, like four to six hundred thousand dollars i wouldn't be discouraged we're still seeing a lot of buyers win great deals on these homes but it is really important to look at the immediate market and this is something an agent a good agent is going to be able to help you with and really determine okay is you know, am I providing the best offer that's going to make sense to that seller too, while also minimizing my costs and getting my monthly payment as low as possible for me if I'm planning on financing that home with a mortgage. So if you guys have any questions, I love to talk about this stuff, reach out and I appreciate your time. Have a fantastic day.